Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine, plant-based fitness nutrition. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So normally I talk about the latest science, the cutting edge, some of the details in our microbiome or nutrients or macronutrients or workout tips or things like this, some of the details of health and fitness. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a little bit broader look, a, a overarching view of how the human body transfers energy. <laughs> That's a big one. But energy is basically what runs everything. And um, it's I broke it down into five simple things. Um, just for oversimplification, obviously there's much more to it than this, but I'm gonna deal with these five basic simple ones. And what we're gonna talk about is earth, air, fire, water, and you. <laughs> That's right, the human being itself. Or plug and play any animal really on this planet, but let's, let's dig down into the deeps of seeing how things work. Okay, so first, I'm going to uh, be talking about how energy is transformed. Um, all of the energy that we have here on this planet is either uh, molecular or it is actually generated from the sun. And by and large, most of the nutritional energy that we get in the form of fats, carbohydrates, protein, and fiber, is generated by the response of the sun. And we have an organism on this planet that is very good at capturing the sun's energy and converting it into useful uh, energy for all other life on this planet. Yep, plants. We have plants to thank. And let's, let's see why that's so important. In the scientific community, we call this the trophic order. Here it is up on the screen. These are the trophic orders. The first trophic level at the very bottom there of the pyramid is the producers. They produce all of the energy and the nutrition for all of the rest of the species on this planet. And that is the plants, plant microorganisms to fully grown multi-organismal plants they are the generators of nutrition. They are the producers of nutrition, whether that's fats, carbs, protein, fiber, or any of the other products and uh, nutrients that we do. It all comes from either the very first trophic scale or the decomposers themselves in the case of vitamin B12. So animals don't produce any nutrition at all, really. They, pr they consume nutrition. So they are the second tier of the phase called consumers. And then of course we have uh, primary consumers, which are herbivores. That's the second level. So those are all the herbivorous animals that consume plants, which human beings belong to. And then of course there are carnivores, which eat herbivores. And at each phase, we lose basically about 10% of the energy that has been captured by the sun of the plants. So the plants actually go in and capture this sun. Let's go ahead and put that up on the screen. So this is an image of how all of the nutrition basically on this planet is made by plants. What it does is take the sun, the solar energies, the energy from the sun and bring it in and take carbon dioxide from the outside in the air. So the sun is your fire. The carbon dioxide in the air is your air. Then of course, plants need water. And then they pull the minerals from the earth. So here you have it taking fire, air, the earth and the water, the four elements and pulling it all together and forming glucose. And from glucose, which is a carbon, a hydrogen, and an oxygen molecule. Let's go ahead and show what that looks like. 
So this is uh, the first uh, one you see on the left-hand side there is a molecule of a fatty acid or fats. The second is a sugar, a carbohydrate. And the third is a dipeptide, a portion of a chain of a protein. So you'll notice something different, similar in all three of these and that they all are carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, three elements, right? Carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen form water, H2O, right? Two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of water. So that's basically it, carbon dioxide and hydrogen, or basically carbon and water. <laughs> well, that's exactly what our body breaks down, fats, sugars, and even proteins too, carbon dioxide, which we exhale, and water, which we either breathe out, sweat out, or pee out. That's it. It's that simple. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. Now, if you look over on the far side, the one difference between protein is that it's got a nitrogen molecule. About You can see the nitrogen molecule at the very top there and two more at the center in this particular dipeptide. So nitrogen is the only thing that is different. But again, the plants pull this nitrogen in either from the soil or from the air and form all of the amino acids, all of the essential amino acids that form all of the rest of the amino acids, all 21 amino acids are formed from these essential amino acids. And all of the essential amino acids are created by plants. There's a picture of how all of your nutrition is made right there. That's it. Whether it's fiber or uh, amino acids or fats or starch or carbohydrates or sugars or vitamins or minerals made uh, bioavailable by the plant by pulling the minerals up into the plant from the soil pulling carbon dioxide and nitrogen either from the soil or for the air. The plants pull all this together and make all of the nutrition that human beings need with the exception of vitamin D3, which is made directly by us from the sun. So we skip the process of the plant and we actually generate that from the sun, just like the plant does with photosynthesis. So this is pretty cool that you've got fire, air, water, and Earth, obviously, is where the minerals come from. And even, even the bacteria that make B12 for us, what is it? It is a cobalamin. What is cobalamin? Cobalamin is a mineral, hence the men, cobalt, which is a mineral from the soil. That's right. So this soil mineral actually has to be taken up by the microbe, the bacteria, to form cobalamin or cyanocobalamin, or methylcobalamin, or all of the cobalamins that make up the B12 family. Exactly. So all of our nutrition comes from the earth, the air, the water, the sun, and the plants pull it all together to form this. Now, it's funny when you hear people say, oh, stay away from sugar. Sugar's a bad thing. I'm avoiding sugar. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> There's no such thing as a low-carb diet. It's all carbohydrates. Here, here's, the, uh, here's the picture again. Fats are a carbohydrate. They have a carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. Sugar is a carbohydrate. It is a carbon, a hydrogen, and oxygen. And even protein is technically the backbone is a carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Yes, it has nitrogen as well, but this is only a small part of it. All three of them are carbohydrates. So there's no such thing actually as a low carb diet unless you're just undernourished uh, and not getting enough calories altogether. Um, so it's interesting that we've come to <laughs> this conclusion that somehow we're manipulating carbohydrates and we're not. It's all carbohydrates, <laughs> all of it, protein, fats, fiber, and of course, carbs are backbones of carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. That's what a carbohydrate is, carbo, carbon, hydrate, water, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. 
So what happens when you exercise? So let's break this down. When you exercise or you move, you've got to get some of that energy. Now, the plant has done this the huge favor of grabbing this energy from the sun and packaging it into these carbohydrates, this carbon-hydrogen bonds there. And of course, um, uh, carbs and protein both have four calories of energy thanks to the sun and thanks to the plants. So animals, nothing to do with this process at all, other than we just consume them. So if you think you're getting something from animals, that's not where you're getting it from. You're getting it from plants, the sun and the soil and the air, those four elements. That's where all of our nutrition, that's where all of our calories come from. That is what our entire body is made up of, of these nutrients gotten from these four, four four sources, energy from the sun, the uh, carbon and nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen from either the air or the soil and the water and bringing that all together in the plants. The plants make it all. Thank you, plants. <laughs> so why aren't we just getting all of our nutrition from the plants? Well, certainly we can. And <laughs> I think I'm evidence of that at 60 years of age and 38 years of eating nothing but plants. That's exactly where this entire body is made up of nothing from but plants, from plants, and only plants. That's what we're really talking about in nutrition. How we got so screwed up on this idea of no carbs. Oh my God, this is so silly. Everything is carbs. Everything. Everything we consume. Fats, carbs, fiber, protein, all has a carbohydrate backbone. Uh, all of our, all of our enzymes, all of our hormones, all of our bones, are everything. <laughs> oh my God, this is all part of that process, and it's all due to thanks to the plants and to the sun and to the bacteria. Thank you for those three groups. Animals have nothing to do with human nutrition. Zero. I don't know how I can make this any more obvious. Here's where all the nutrition comes from, the sun feeding the, the, the plants and the decomposers feeding the plants, the nutrients that they need. This is the plants making all of the nutrients. This is what those nutrients are actually chemically made up of, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and in the case of proteins, nitrogen. And let's break it down. So your fat is made mostly of carbon. It's got a lot of hydrogen bonds in there, and which is why all those bonds carry more calories. The more bonds you have, the more places you can store solar energy. So the more you release those bonds, the more you're releasing that energy, and the body can convert into usable energy in the form of ATP to power all of our cells in our body. So when you lose carbon, you breathe out. We breathe out carbon dioxide. So that's a carbon molecule stuck to two oxygen molecules. When we breathe in, the most important thing we're breathing in is oxygen. Why do we need to breathe in oxygen? Because oxygen oxidizes fat and oxidizes everything else to make it break down. Oxygen breaking down wood is called fire. Oxygen breaking down metal is called rust. Oxygen breaking down fat is called fat burning. <laughs> That's exactly what it's doing. That's why we breathe in to take in oxygen, to burn that and convert that energy. And we breathe out water vapor. That's the H2O. That's the hydrogen and oxygen. And carbon dioxide. That's the carbon molecules. So when your fat is made mostly of carbon and also some hydrogen and oxygen, you lose that carbon when you breathe. So you breathe and you are continuing to breathe every day. So when you are not consuming food and you are breathing, you are burning fat. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. That's why we breathe all the time so that we can liberate energy and utilize it for all of our functions in our body. Now, when you are not digesting, digesting food can take up to 30% of your total energy usage. 
when you're not digesting, so when you're fasting or even intermittent fasting, your body is not using that energy for that purpose. So when you do this, you are still breaking down. You are still breathing. You are still breathing out carbon. And that carbon can only exit your body from carbon bound molecules, which are carbohydrates. These are carbohydrates are, remember, proteins, fats, fiber, and uh, carbs are all carbohydrate backbones. They all contain the carb carbon. So every time you're breathing and you're exhaling, you are breathing out carbon, which means you must have broken down that carbon from a carbohydrate backbone, which is fats, protein, carbs, and fiber all have that carbohydrate backbone. So that's where it comes from. Every time we breathe out, we are breathing out carbon. We are, that is an absolute, absolute indicator that we are burning fat. Now, when there's no fat to burn, obviously we can burn carbohydrates. And when there are no carbohydrates to burn, we can break down muscle tissue and burn the protein itself. So there's lots of different sources, but all of those can be broken down into glucose. Remember, glucose is the main molecule that the, the plants make pretty much everything out of. Alkaloids, vitamins, organic acids, wood, coal, cellulose, amino acids, carbs, starch, fats, proteins, amino acids, all are made from glucose because it is the backbone. This is the glucose molecule. That's how everything else is made. All right, so when you bring in the earth, all our nutrition comes from the earth. This whole body is made from elements of the earth. So we depend on the earth to give us the building blocks to create the human body. Then we breathe. We breathe in oxygen so that we can break down these carbohydrates, release the energy, and use that energy for functioning. Then we, once this fat is broken down, the carbon and the uh, oxygen is combined to carbon dioxide. We exhale this carbon dioxide. And the other part is H2O, water. We breathe out water, we exhale water, we sweat out water, and we urinate out water. Okay, so when we're breaking down fats, carbs, proteins, and even fiber for use of energy, we're releasing a lot of carbon dioxide and a lot of water. When you work out heavily and intensely, what are the two major things you do? You breathe harder, so you need more oxygen coming in to break down more energy, to release more energy, and you exhale more because you are eliminating the carbon dioxide that is liberated from that breakdown of fats, carbs, protein, and fiber. Now, we also eliminate the water. So what do we do? We can push it right out of our skin. Now, all of this liberation of energy creates heat in our body. So our body temperature goes up. So our body says, well, let's use some of that water through perspiration, sweat, and the evaporation cools our body to cool back down our body. This is a perfect balancing mechanism our body uses by saying, hey, that excess water that we're breathing out or peeing out, we can actually take some and push it out the skin, which will cool the body because you've generated so much heat from the release of this energy, liberating it by oxidizing it. This is really cool. And for me, this is the fun stuff. This is basically understanding the fundamentals of what exercise do. So when you can tell you are in fat burning mode, one, you should be breathing hard, two, you should be sweating. And that's not gonna be true for every single person. Some people have difficulties perspiring at all due to many, many different things. But in general, I'm talking, most of people who work out with intensity will breathe hard and will sweat and will generate body heat. Those are all processes of our body breaking down, eliminating, and sweating out water, car carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. That's it in a nutshell. It's so simple. And it's those four different things. Earth, where we get our nutrition from. Thank you, plants and sun. Two, air, where all of the oxygen, nitrogen, and uh, carbon and carbon dioxide come from. Three, 
the fire, the sun that bind, it gives us the energy that binds to all the molecules that when we separate them again, releases that solar energy. We run on the sun. Without the sun, no life on this planet. That's because all of that energy comes from there. And then of course, water, water makes it flow. Water is created when we break down. Remember carbohydrate, right? Fat is a basically dense carbohydrate, lots of extra bonds in there to create even more energy. And that's why uh, protein and carbohydrates have four calories, yet uh, fat has nine calories in there. So lots more bonds there creating lots more energy production. And of course, that means lots more energy. That's why our bodies favor fat. Now, unfortunately, the food companies have figured that out and that we have a preference for that because you've got nine calories of energy that your body can use. Well, that's a whole lot better than four. So the body will have a preference to finding fatty foods. It's why when we taste it on our tongue, it's like, ooh, fatty foods, that tastes great. Well, that's our body signaling, okay, that's going to give us more calories for survival. <laughs> Occasional fatty foods are good. They're usually rich in the polyunsaturated foods, monounsaturated foods. These things are good in plant forms. It's that we found fatty foods like dairy and fatty foods like animal fat, saturated fats, not good for us, that we tricked our body into thinking that's a good thing when it's not. Okay, and then the fifth element is, of course, you. And let's break this down. For nutrition, we have the primary purpose of nutrition and the primary purpose of uh, nutrition is survival, right? But human beings have, by and large, there are definitely people around the globe that are still fighting for survival based on scavenging for food. But by and large, the vast majority of human beings on this population have access to food. And therefore, survival is not really one of the main reasons why we eat. We eat to satiation. We eat basically if we can afford it. <laughs> and two, uh, we eat till we're full or sometimes even beyond that, which is why we have an uh, obesity epidemic in the United States. So the second reason for purpose. So let's break these down into five different categories of you. One, there is purpose. You have to have purpose to do anything, to think anything, to feel anything. You need a purpose. Two, you need a motivation to do this. Now that you have a purpose, a reason for doing them, you need a motivation to act upon that purpose. Three, you need belief. Now, belief is not, I'm not talking about uh, belief systems. I'm talking about you have to believe that you can accomplish a task or you won't do it. If you don't think you can do it, you're not going to even try. So you have to have that belief before you can carry out that action. Number four is will. Okay, now you believe, you have your purpose. Now you've got your motivation, your usually emotional response. The purpose is mental. The um, motivation is more emotional, generally. Your belief system, that means, yep, yeah, I can do it. I know what I'm here for. I know what I want to do. I know I can do it. Number four is willpower. Will is I want to do it and I am going to do it. Now that's what gets us into action. And then, of course, the fifth one is taking that action. So those are the five steps of the process the human being has to go through in order to do something like me putting out this Facebook Live. My purpose is I want to help people. That gives me a lot of joy. My motivation is I have lots of good in information and access that I can share with people that they may not have. Three, my belief is I believe it can do some good because I get great feedback from people thanking me for doing these Facebook Lives. Number four is the will. Yeah, I'm going to do it because I can. I've got a successful company. It frees me up some time to be able to do this, to share my purpose with people. And that's the action and why we're doing a Facebook Live today. So those are your five steps of you and your five steps of earth, air, fire, water, and you. I hope you enjoyed this one. I wanted to lay it out more big picture, looking at the whole scheme of things, how we start out and the steps of, of, of energy coming from the sun, then to plants and then to animals, that plants create all of the energy by binding the sun's solar energy 
and forming it into it that they're all carbohydrates whether it's plants uh, whether it's protein carbs or fats it's all <laughs> carbs because carbon is what we're based on we are a carbon-based unit human beings are and of course that every time you are not consuming food you are utilizing that energy and fat is just a simple way of storing extra energy that's all it is and if we start to take a look and change the way we feel think about what our food is what our exercise does for us both for mental emotional spiritual energetic and physical health then we can enjoy the benefits once we get back into a harmonized cooperative uh, existence understanding that all of our nutrition comes from plants bacteria and the sun and just incorporating those four elements of earth, air, fire, and water, and we can understand why we do things and why we can enjoy a truly healthy, fit life using and understanding these elements that are all laid out for us. Let's get back to the origins. Let's get back to the basics and start applying some basic common sense to why we're here and how we can work in harmony with our environment uh, to enjoy ourselves and enjoy our life and be able to live it without disease states, without harming others, and in a way that is cooperative with our environment, just like most of the animals do. I'm going to take a quick peek and see if we've got any uh, questions up. Um, I don't see any questions, so I thank you for watching. For those of you who are watching, if you did post any questions, I'll be sure to get back to them. Thanks again for watching. Please share and like so we can keep this going, get more people interested, share good, empowering, positive information so that people can live the best lives they can. That's what I want for you. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week.